story happened to my grandfather when he was young. One night, he was carrying bundles of firewood into the storeroom before the rain came when suddenly from outside the gate came a very violent knock on the door. It was late at night. At this time, someone must have come to an urgent matter. Thinking about it, Grandpa quickly put down the pile of firewood in his hand, grabbed the oil lamp and went to open the gate. It turned out that it was Uncle Fang, the village head, and my grandfather was also a little surprised because he did not understand why the village head was still looking for him at this time. Grandpa wondered what was wrong, but Uncle Fang didn't answer, just stared at my grandfather. Uncle Fang then said nothing and went straight into the house. My grandfather also noticed something strange about Uncle Fang, so he still tried to ask Uncle Fang but in return there was silence. The atmosphere at this time was becoming more and more strange and confusing. My grandfather looked at Uncle Fang's back, suddenly realized that his gait today was very strange like a puppet being controlled, looking a bit scary. At this time, my grandfather felt that Uncle Fang was no longer normal. He also suspected something but still tried not to think too much. Before my grandpa could close the gate, he rushed to Uncle Fang and put his hand on his shoulder to ask what happened. At this time, being held back, Uncle Fang slowly turned around still refusing to say a word. When he turned his face completely, my grandfather quickly raised the oil lamp to see Uncle Fang's face clearly. As expected, even Uncle Fang's face had become strange and confusing. At first glance, he knew that Uncle Fang had encountered something with bad luck. My grandfather shook Uncle Fang's body to wake him up. After shaking for a while, Uncle Fang's face also returned to normal. Suddenly he fell to the ground unconscious. My grandfather was also very surprised and quickly called him to wake up. At that moment, for a moment, my grandfather saw a figure standing outside the gate. It was a little figure, like a child. It stood at the door, staring inside, its face very lifeless, scary. But as soon as my grandfather turned around to get a better look, the child ran away very quickly. Because Uncle Fang was fainting, my grandfather didn't give chase, but it was the shadow of a child. My grandpa wondered that all the children in the village have gone to sleep. So who was that child just now? Not thinking much, worrying about the village head was more important, so Grandpa put those thoughts aside and looked at Uncle Fang's situation, who was now unconscious on the ground. Uncle Fang's mouth was foaming, and it looked very heavy. Grandpa hastily used folk remedies to wake Uncle Fang up. After a long time using many other tools, Uncle Fang was also regaining consciousness. Uncle Fang wasn't fully awake yet, but he kept saying that he had seen a ghost. Then his eyes widened, his body trembled as if he was very scared, and his mouth kept saying that there were ghosts and that his son was dead. Hearing this, my grandfather was also surprised and asked the village head to explain everything that had happened. Although he was still tired, Uncle Fang still began to tell everything. Uncle Fang was a village head who recently moved to the village. The rainy season was also coming if it rained too much. It would cause floods, making people in the village extremely miserable. So Uncle Fang gathered the strong men in the village to strengthen the dam. But when everyone was working and digging up the soil to add more to the dam, suddenly they saw something scary sticking out of the ground. Hey. It was a coffin. Seeing this, everyone hurriedly informed the village head. Uncle Fang also told everyone to stop working and asked if anyone knew who this coffin belonged to. After questioning the village for a while, two men finally came and examined the matter of the coffin. 
They prevented Uncle Fang from continuing to build the dike, but instead dig the coffin up and bury it properly before continuing. But the village head disagreed because no one knew about this coffin and the dam construction was extremely urgent. Although a bit annoyed and disagreed, listening to the village head's persuasion that it was for the sake of the whole village, the two brothers reluctantly obeyed his uncle's words without making offerings or anything else. After that, the work on the dike also continued. Everyone started to fill the coffin with soil and continued to prepare for the dike. Because the flood season was coming, everyone was busy with work and forgot about the coffin. But, unexpectedly, that night was also Uncle Fang's fateful day. That night, his eldest daughter took an oil lamp and said she would go to her uncle's house nearby. But after waiting for a long time, it was already late and Uncle Fang still hadn't seen his daughter come back. He started to feel insecure. After that, Uncle Fang decided to look for his daughter. On the way, he suddenly saw a familiar figure from afar right at the corner of the wall, holding the oil lamp that his daughter had brought with her earlier. Feeling puzzled, Uncle Fang called out but saw no response from his daughter, so he went over there and examined the situation. It was dark, so the air inside the corner of the wall became even hazier. The light from the oil lamp made everything very magical. The daughter stood leaning against a wall. Her head was down and unresponsive when Uncle Fang called. As Uncle Fang brought the lamp closer to his daughter's face, the horrors became clear. A rope out of nowhere was hooking her daughter's neck as if she had intentionally hanged herself. This thing made Uncle Fang extremely panicked. He couldn't believe his eyes. He called out his daughter's name but to no avail. His legs trembled and he could no longer stand. The scary scene was clear now. The rope was tied through the branch above. It was like a noose and took the life of his daughter. Her face had become white, blood veins emerged crimson in both eyes, and a long striped tongue looked extremely scary. Uncle Fang still tried to bring his hand to her nose to check again. He couldn't believe his daughter was dead. Ah! Uncle Fang panicked, turned around and ran away as fast as he could. He planned to run to his brother's house nearby to find help, and since his younger brother also had some understanding of spiritual matters, he thought his brother might be able to help because his daughter's death was so strange. He was in a hurry to run when suddenly he was distracted by a noise coming from behind. It was the sound of footsteps. It echoed through the empty street getting louder and louder like someone was running behind him. Uncle Fang slowly stopped and listened more carefully. He came to a complete stop now. Something enchanting made him slowly turn around. Uncle Fang glimpsed the figure slowly approaching him from the darkness of the road. A stream of cold air ran down his spine causing Uncle Fang to panic. He shouted to ask what the person behind him was, which also helped him to be less afraid. After that, the shadow of the other person also gradually approached him. Under the dim moonlight, the shadow's face was also more visible. But the other face was very strange. The eyes were wide and bloodshot, its face was pale and the mouth was smiling, a ghostly smile. Uncle Fang was too scared to scream for help because he also sensed that what was standing in front of him was not a human. But for some reason his eyes got tired right after that and then slowly fell asleep without knowing when. After that he couldn't remember anything until he woke up and met my grandfather. He told my grandfather everything and also described it as a small childlike figure. My grandfather also heard about the kid who drowned in the lake. 
For some reason the family buried it next to the reservoir. Because of some floods, the tombstone was also lost. The kid's family also moved to another place, so no one remembers this anymore. Then, my grandfather and Uncle Fang went to the place where the daughter had been hanged to check. When they got there, they took the girl's body down. She was dead. Uncle Fang was extremely sad. The following day, Uncle Fang called everyone to come and dig up the child's coffin to move it to another place. He also invited the shaman to come and pay respects to him. Uncle Fang was extremely painful because the departure of his daughter was also because of his haste. That thing made him regret it for a long time later.